If you're tired of losing close deals to your competitors, keep listening. These podcasts are designed to leverage the experience of tenured sales professionals and leaders to infuse performance in your sales journey. So let's go. Welcome to Canada Business Talks. I am the I'm a consulting editor here at Canadian SME Business Magazine and the founder of Leverage Consulting. You can find us at findyourleverage.ca. Canada Business Talks is for people who keep the vision strong of altering how business is done. You'll learn how to adapt to the new normal, not because we know the path forward, but we're going to be speaking to someone today who has been through his share of challenges and the principles that we're going to be able to extract from his overcoming nature will certainly inspire and empower us to overcome what we are in today. Good Life's first location opened in 1979 in London, Ontario, and has since grown to more than 400 locations. Patch and Good Life have received over 25 national and international awards, uh, including International Iconic Brand Award, Canada's Best Managed Companies, Canada's Best Gym, and Canada's Most Admired CEO. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Patchell Evans. Thank you for being with us, Patch. So Patch, we're back in the late 70s. Uh, where did the idea and motivation come from to launch Good Life Fitness? It's interesting how it happened is in the first year of university, I had this really bad motorcycle accident. I basically ripped off the right-hand side of my body. My right shoulder used to be three or four inches lower than my left, and I was classified as permanently disabled. And I took uh, physio and then fitness training to get, to get back into shape and to build it back up. And um, I switched from the business program to the physical education kinesiology program. And because using fitness gave me my life back, I became like, you know, I want to give this to other people. I want, I want to share what I got. The equipment worked. We still have the equipment in the clubs. But the guy who ran the club thought it was an easy way to make money. But he didn't actually understand. And he was a great guy, but he didn't understand that you have to deliver a different kind of product to people. So it's not just about putting the equipment there. You have to change people's lives using the equipment, you know, but I put myself at the university running a snow plowing business mm -hmm. and running that snow plowing business provided the money till I could learn how to run a retail business. You know, so I lost a lot of money until I figured out all the sales techniques, the service techniques that would allow me to not to take my passion and make it practical. So it wasn't enough just to care. I had to be practical at it. So I want to make sure I understand this process, uh, th this properly, so we can pull out a learning. Your focus wasn't on your product. Your focus was on the impact and the benefit of the product to your customers. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. you, no one cares what you're selling. Everyone cares what it does for them. Mm -hmm. You know, so... The, the key is what problem are you going to solve for that person? And they may not even know they have a problem, and it's your job to educate them about the opportunity. Now, uh, Patch, you describe a dislocated shoulder. How do you roll with a dislocated shoulder as part of your physical makeup? How, do you, uh, how did you do the things that you did when you had to run a snow plowing business to fund your dream, which was to help as many people as possible f physically. Can you describe the mental makeup and the other ways that it takes to overcome challenges? The idea behind rowing was what sport would be the greatest challenge to build my arm, arm and shoulder? Because it wasn't, it was like, I, I ripped my deltoid off, I ripped my pec off, I broke my arm, I broke my clavicle. So what would be the biggest challenge? I want to completely switch gears, and I might have this wrong, Patch. 
I might have this wrong, but is it possible? And I don't know if this is possible, okay? Can you, is it possible to triangulate between Hawaii, Fleetwood Mac, and a restaurant? Is that at all possible? Because I, I, I've been hearing something and uh, is that possible? And if it is, could you please complete that equation for us? What do they have to do with each other? Um, it, it was kind of f funny. Um, I, I have a combined family. My wife, Silicon Lauman, runs Unsinkable and is a speaker. And she had two children. I had two children. And we tried to bring them together. We went to Hawaii and had a nice vacation in Hawaii. Happened to meet Fleetwood Mac there. And uh, Fleetwood goes, oh, you guys are like the energetic power couple. You know, she was a four-time Olympian, right? And, uh, you know, she's a, a power onto herself. And so, long story short, we got along. And uh, he was opening up a restaurant, and we invested in the restaurant. And that, that's how we connected. And then the next time I ran into Fleetwood Mac was in England. I was there visiting some friends. Um, my son was uh, rowing over there, and um, they were going to go to a Fleetwood Mac concert. So I happened to phone just phoned him up. I said, any chance I can get some tickets? He said, oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, right? He's the only uh, rock star I really know. I, I still think it's a fantastic story that you found other opportunities and outlets for your entrepreneurial flair. And and now you, you own a restaurant. You're part owner of a restaurant in Hawaii. Well, yeah. you know, I, I own about 25 different businesses, like, I, I own a little 10% of a chain called Dogtopia, which is an American and Canadian chain of dog spas, right? With a guy named Peter Thomas who um, used to run Remax Realty in Canada. And um, I own some IT companies, TI companies, whatever you want to call them. And um, I have fitness businesses in Australia and New Zealand and um, stuff over in Europe. So. When you when you get around a little bit, you meet really interesting people, and so stuff happens, man. Skill set and mindset. We can help your sales team bring these together for powerful sales performances. Click the link below for more information. For now, let's get back to the podcast. Why was this the right time to undertake and uh, write and release this report? Well, um, SMEs have always been at the heart of the Canadian and the Ontario uh, economy. And it was absolutely critical to um, talk about it at this moment because unlike the recession in 2008, 2009, um, that actually, um, affected larger companies more uh, because it was primarily a financial crisis. It, it wasn't as much a Main Street crisis. This is very much a Main Street crisis and small businesses have borne over 60% of all the job losses um, in the current uh, recession. So it was really crucial to underscore um, those facts but at the same time, we also thought it was important to not just be doom and gloom and how difficult things are for SMEs, but also to point out what amazingly resilient uh, and creative and generous people make up uh, entrepreneurship in Ontario and Canada. And so there are 28 really incredible case studies of companies in the middle of crisis finding ways forward being creative being generous uh, pivoting to new businesses new lines of business or new ways of delivering old business um, and staying alive and thriving in that uh, in that way was there anything that surprised you when you were compiling this report and was there anything that was reinforced about 
the on, uh, entrepreneur's nature in general through this process. So was, were there any surprises and what was a, a prevailing thought that was reinforced? Look, it wasn't so much surprise. I'm uh, a huge fan of entrepreneurship. I mean, it's it's what excites me about getting up every day and, and heading up the Ontario Chamber of Commerce because entrepreneurship creates uh, opportunity. And I come from a family of immigrants and quite frankly, the the ability within, the, within this country to start and build your own business uh, enabled my family um, to, to go from no contacts, no money, no language skills, uh, to building a great life for themselves and for their children uh, by starting small businesses as my dad um, did. So I'm, I'm never surprised by the creativity, by the discipline, by the sheer will uh, of entrepreneurs. Uh, it's important to reinforce uh, that message at, at every turn. Um, and, uh, but, uh, but the cases, uh, the case studies are always helpful because you can always learn things, uh, from them to help in your entrepreneurial, uh, journey. And so one of the things that's reinforced consistently through the piece is how important being able to adapt digitally and making the digital pivot are to um, to entrepreneurs of all three levels of government uh, how can they contribute to not only uh, correcting the, the access scenario to broadband but what other issues do you feel that we need to be able to see more support or more visibility of action from the federal provincial and again the municipal level as well right well, look, I would start with an observation uh, that we are most fortunate in Canada that we've seen a level of collaboration between uh, local, provincial and federal government that uh, is unprecedented. I mean, they really have come together and look, business is incredibly frustrated. We would want uh, the policies to happen even faster. But government isn't built to be fast. It's built to be slow and plodding and careful for good reasons. You don't want billions of dollars to be uh, spent willy nilly. Uh, but this crisis has required people to come to the fore because the pace of change forced by the virus has meant that all of us have, have to uh, change the speed at which decisions are made. So let's talk about those two elements. The, there, there, there seems to be a bit of a divide between consumer confidence and the sentiment of a business owner's anticipation of a reemergence and a resurgence to restore a norm that perhaps we hold as an, an, an ideal or an expectation. And there seems to be a, a gap between expectation and what we are actually experiencing. And, you know, and there's always this thought that frustration is the canyon between expectation and experience. Uh, in this time, what can small business owners do to help boost consumer confidence? You mentioned a number of initiatives from the from uh, PPE, uh, from testing, you know, all the other measures that we can do to reassure gatherings again and you know coming back into storefronts and you know re-energizing business again what else could potentially a business do uh, business owners to keep their sentiment alive and what else can we do to affect consumer confidence right well it's a great it's a great set of questions and and first off you're absolutely right if you look at every jurisdiction around the world that has reopened prior to us reopening you see that um, just because you open it doesn't mean that they come. There's still mm -hmm. a shortfall in terms of both employees and uh, in terms of consumers. And so people have to really think about that and know that if you're building your business model, that the only way you can pay for all of this is to get back to 100% of where you were before the uh, crisis, you're going to be sorely mistaken because that has not been the pattern anywhere else in the world and we're not seeing it here um, either. Secondly, 
Um, you really have to, we can't guarantee, no one can promise that there will be no more infections and no more deaths. Absent a vaccine widely available, we can't make that promise. What we have to promise, what we have to do everything in our power to ensure is that we're not stupid, mm -hmm. that we are doing everything possible to keep people safe. And one of the things I've told uh, my members is, if you feel you couldn't invite your children, your parents, your spouse into your facility, if you don't feel uh, that it's safe enough to do that, you haven't done enough. Wow. You have to feel because, because your customers, your employees, they're your family. So it's, it's interesting, you're saying that inconsistency leads to a lack of confidence. So therefore, if we were to flip the script, being consistent in your delivery of highest standards will grow consumer confidence. 100%. And you're seeing a number of programs in one, and you can go to postpromise.ca, which is a program that the federal government just um, uh, supported the rollout of. And what it is, um, is something for all business owners. It's a checklist of the, the most basic steps around hand washing, around PPE, around training, um, uh, and around cleanliness and what you're doing to do deep cleaning of your facilities. And you can take the post promise and confirm that you're following all of this. And then there are posters that you can print up that you can put in front of, of uh, your facilities, your retail outlet, your factory, that you are following the post promise. That's part of it. But then you've got to really live the post promise by doing all of those things to the highest level that you can. Well, I've had, I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to review the report that was released this morning at 9 a.m. Uh, thank you for compiling what was so inspiring to me was all the stories of how our network of small and medium businesses in Ontario specifically and Quebec in other places all came together. I, it was a powerful message to remind us of the power of small and medium sized businesses in Canada. Now, the, for the businesses that weren't able to get on track as quickly as others, what resources and how could they connect with the Ontario Chamber of Commerce and how can they receive some direction, guidance, some thoughts and inspiration the way that I've been inspired by going through the report? How can they connect? Well, I, I encourage them to come to our website at OCC.ca and uh, Small Business Big Impact is the name of the, uh, the report and I encourage them to read and be inspired as you were and as I was by the examples a very strong how to uh, laid out uh, for businesses to follow and it doesn't apply to every business but the thought process behind shaking up your business uh, model and thinking about what else could be done are always important messages to reinforce thank you so much for taking the time